So, so let, let me ask you, so being in a very male dominated industry space, engineering, mm. how, how do you handle that as a female? Is that daunting for you? Do you find it as a challenge to, uh, get in front of people and it'll be taken seriously? Uh, no, actually, I think it's an advantage Okay. because if you're going to look up Starlink, for example, on YouTube, how many thumbnails are going to have some blonde girl in it? You know, it's something that kind of makes my channel definitely different. And I think piques people's interest because it's mostly dudes. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, and I think, you know, I think if there was anything, I wish that I had a little bit more of a background in either rocket science or engineering, but I know just enough to like get by and ask people questions and keep up with the conversation. And the journalism comes into play. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of my angle too. I'm not trying to become an engineer on the side so that I can have a really technical channel. No. Like, why would I do that? My expertise is interviewing experts, interviewing people and letting them tell the story. I'm good at asking questions. So my goal is to like bring unique, informative people on the channel that have the knowledge and for me just to pull it out of them. And so that I think, you know, obviously I mostly have male guests on my channel and it's because of what you said. There's not, I guess there are some females, but there's sure. definitely more males. Um, and uh, yeah, do I feel like intimidated by it? Surprisingly, not really. Like I, I think if anything, you know, the demographic for my channel is 95% male, but it's also 95% male for another giant space creator that I know who has 500,000 subscribers and he's a dude. I think it's just the topic, sure. you know? So, you know, I, you, you just have to know who your audience is. You can't, who your audience is, is like, that's how it is. You can't force, oh, well, I only want to talk to, you know, 40 year old women. I can't force that. You know what I mean? Right. So I think you, I think you use the analytics, you use the data and, you know, I don't dive into this too much, but what do you think marketers do? Right. They're not necessarily like they have to figure out what their demo is first. And that just happens based on the content. You know, I yeah. don't think a lot of girls care about starship. Some do, right. but not a lot do. And like, is that, is that my job to like change that? And, you know, like, sure. If, if I can get more people inspired, that's great. But like, yeah, it, it, it's, it's an interesting question. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just, just curious. It, it's, does it, it, how do you overcome the obstacles? Are there obstacles you got to overcome from, you know, a female point of view into a male dominated industry, or like you said, it's, it's actually easier for you, right? Listen, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that some of my viewers don't have a parasocial crush on me. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people, oh, your eyes are so pretty. I could stare. At, and I'm not trying to sit here and say I'm like the best looking person in the world. But there's this yeah, it's, thing it's that, something wrong out there for sure. Yeah, there's this thing that happens of parasocial relationships. And it's why when I go to like Starbase during a launch, everyone's coming up to me. Oh my gosh, Ellie, I'm from Canada. I watch you, Ellie. Oh my gosh. I watch your videos all the time. I don't know them. They know me. Yeah. They feel like they really know me because maybe they've watched me for months, maybe even years. And so, you know, if, like I said, if anything, they either like my channel and they just like the content that I'm making, or maybe they stay because they have a little crush on me. And it's, it's kind of like, why Either way I... you're getting paid, right? Exactly. And it's like, I mean, I feel weird saying that out loud, but like, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Have you adopted to the going to SpaceX or to uh, an event and everyone recognizing you? Is that strange for you? How do you handle that? Well, it's interesting because I had it a little bit when I was the main news anchor in Tri-Cities, Washington. Some people like, oh, you're the news lady. But 
now I don't have it all that often unless I'm at a Tesla event or I'm at Starbase. And then it's like, whoa, this is what it would be like to be an actress or a real yeah. celebrity. And it's, it is kind of exhausting. And I feel saying silly saying that because, you know, I'm honored that like that even happens. It is a cool experience, but it's nice to be able to like leave that event and then not really like have that all the time because, you know, when you're interacting with your fans, you want to be nice. You want to be pleasant. You want to be excited because you're grateful that they watch your channel. But after doing that, you know, with like 50, you know, 30 to 50 people, it's like, oh my God. Yeah. You just want to go home, put your feet up, right? <laughs> yes. Can I put on sunglasses and, you know, a hoodie? And so it's, it's like weird, but it's definitely not all the time. But, you know, one of the turning points too, and I realized, I think, I think I should quit my job was about two months before I went to the, uh, one of the, oh, the cyber rodeo. So the opening of Giga Texas. Yep. And there was like a meet meetup between YouTubers and fans in a park. And I signed two people's Teslas with Sharpie. At that time, I had like 35,000 subscribers. Now I have almost 85,000. And I was like, I'm not even, I haven't even made that much Tesla content. And somehow I'm here at a Tesla event. People like want like permanent autographs like, you know what, like maybe, maybe, maybe I do have like a reason to pursue this. Like I'm, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Makes a yeah. lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, you know, maybe, maybe I am like going to grow the channel. If I've already grown it this much to at least get recognized when I didn't think I was that big and still don't, it's, it's one of the problems with like being a YouTube creator is it's, it feels like it's, never ending, you know, sure. this, um, this target that you're trying to chase. Like when I hit 50,000 subscribers, I feel like it just started like, taking off. Do you have a target in mind? How big do you want to get? Well, obviously as big as I can, <laughs> but right. you know, I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm 15,000 away from a hundred thousand. I'll get that cool plaque yeah. and then I'll feel so satisfied. But unfortunately, I know that's not true right. because when I hit 50,000, I was already like, well, now I need to hit 60,000. Like I didn't even stop to savor the moment. Right. And so that's like an interesting problem to have because yeah. it's almost like you're just, you see other channels like Mr. Beast and you're like, well, I'm nothing on YouTube. But then you meet someone who doesn't have luck on social media or a big channel and they're like, no, you literally have, you know, two or three churches worth of subscribers. So why aren't you satisfied? It's it's a it's a weird game to yeah. play. It's you're it's constantly you're constantly chasing, right? Like you said, you get to 100, you want 200, you want 5 mil, you know. It's yeah. it's it's always growing. 